good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar, A New Interconnected Approach to the New BCE Biology Study Design. We would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of our land on which we are gathered and pay our respects to the elders, both past and present. My name is Emma Kapler and I'm the Education Sales Manager here in Victoria. I also look after the schools in the Bayside and Mornington Peninsula areas. Now, before we make a start with the introductions, I just wanted to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and will be distributed to everyone that has registered for this event. Um, you'll also notice that there's a Q&A box on your screen and we encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation as this is going to be monitored throughout the, um, throughout the event. Um, and then at the very end of the presentations, there'll also be some extra time um, for any questions that we didn't get a chance to answer. I'm now going to introduce you to our very friendly Victorian sales team. We have Paula Kelly. Paula looks after the schools in the western suburbs of Melbourne, as well as the regional areas in the west of Victoria. We have Carolyn Chalora. Carolyn looks after the schools in the north and the northeast of Victoria, uh, Melbourne, I should say, and also the northern areas of regional Victoria. We have Jenny Nelson as well. Jenny looks after schools in the south and um, the southeast of Melbourne, as well as schools in um, those regional areas. Thanks, team. Um, and now to our wonderful author team and presenters. We have Simon Massa, uh, Victoria Shaw. We have um, Brett Drummond, Kylie May, and Ben Elliott. They're all highly experienced in the teaching of VCE biology and are currently teaching the subject. Uh, the authors also have experience as BCAR examiners and they were also involved in the reviewing of the new study design. So I'm now going to hand you over to them. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Emma. Um, thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, it's I know it's a busy time of the term for, for most of you with uh, internal assessments and reporting and everything like that. So to make uh, some time in your day to join us and uh, have us share with you uh, our passion and our excitement for this new resource uh, is amazing. So thank you. Um, I'm going to start off quickly with sort of talking through what today's presentation will cover. So we're going to talk about why we believe our new Cambridge resource uh, is the one that you should choose for your schools um, and why this is really an advantage for your student and their learning. Uh, we're going to look at how this book emphasises feedback for both the students uh, and the teachers. Um, and also how the textbook and the digital resources provide further support for not only your students, but also for, for yourself, whether you're a new teacher or an experienced teacher. And obviously, we're going to show you some of the emphasis on the new content that's been included in the study design. First of all, I'll also uh, do our introductions for our author team. So today you'll be hearing uh, from Tori Shaw and myself who will present uh, the presentation. But behind the scenes, we've got Brett Drummond, Ben Elliott and Kylie May, and they're all going to be manning the Q&A throughout this session. So if you have any questions as content's being presented, um, you want to know more about the book, um, please don't hesitate, jump on the Q&A straight away. They'll be there to answer those questions. Um, and if there's things that we want to raise live with you, they'll do a little post that says this question will be answered live and we'll cover that uh, when there's a little break in the presentation. So please use that throughout. Uh, they're there to assist and answer any questions. So first of all, um, why Cambridge's new resource? Um, so I think the first advantage is actually the author team. There's only five of us in the author team. Um, we believe that that is a really good consistency throughout the book. So we're really collaborative. We've worked together throughout the last two years in writing this book from scratch. So this is purposely written for the new study design. Um, we are all teachers currently in the classroom with students teaching across units one to four biology. So we know the struggles that students have day in, day out, uh, what they need improvement on, um, 
as Emma said at the start, we are BCAR assessors. Uh, we have been members on the panel review for this new study design. So we know why the content's been added that's new into the course. We know why content has been shifted between units. We know that the building that flow from year seven to 10 through to VCE and not making it as repetitive. So we feel like uh, that comes across in our textbook and our digital resources. And that's something that your students will benefit from. And that is the whole purpose of this book. For students benefit as well, there is no fluff. So we have tried to structure the writing of the book. So it's clear that this is what students need to know. Students will have information from VCAR examiners, teachers about how to develop their skills in answering questions, how to develop their literacy skills, structuring their answers, common questions, common topics where misconceptions arise or that assessors usually pull out uh, for an exam and how to tackle those. But more importantly, we feel like we're sharing our joy for biology with you and with the students. Uh, and I think that comes across hopefully uh, in the way that our engaged sections are set up at the start of each section of chapter. And we'll show you a bit of those shortly. The other advantage is that there's flexibility for you as a teacher with worksheets, practicals, topic tests, um, downloadable, editable SACs. You can change anything, you can edit anything. It's not a physical workbook. So you can give your students exactly what you've covered, what you haven't covered. Um, you can edit it to make it suited to their needs uh, or anything they're struggling with as they're going through different topics. So this is everything that your students need for a successful outcome. And that's why we're all here is to benefit and improve our students when it comes to their assessments and their end of year exam. Um, and if that's not enough, we said this is this textbook, this resource is new it's written from scratch there's no editing there's no adapting of a previous resource we haven't been hamstrung by a certain percentage of changes that we can make it's completely new for this course um, if you're anxious about the new content we've supported you by providing valuable links on where we think that that context context fits in with the previous content that's been in the study design and we'll show you throughout this presentation how the resource supports students of all abilities. And that's everything from students with low literacy levels to students with English as a second language, right to the top of your high performing, talented, gifted students. And not only supports them, but also supports all teachers, both new um, and experienced. And we'll again, we'll show you a little bit more um, throughout this presentation. So at the start of every chapter, we've identified the learning intentions that we think students need to be able to do for each topic or for each concept. So at the start of a chapter, you will see that there is the study design points that are covered throughout that chapter. And then we've broken those further down into key learning intentions. So what we think for each of those study design points in those chapters, students need to be able to do. And that can simply be from recalling basic information to drawing processes, to being able to explain something in this context. So that therefore makes it really explicit for what we think students need to know. And at the end of the chapter, those learning intentions are transferred into a success criteria. So that means that students then have an opportunity to tick off what they do and what they don't know once they've, once they've completed a chapter of work. And in the chapter review questions, we've identified what success criteria that certain questions link to. So when students are completing questions, they can get a direct sense of, yes, I understand that success criteria, I understand that process, versus I need to do a bit of work on this. Um, and we'll show you the advantage um, that that has as well in our digital resource. Something else that's really exciting is we, we see that biology as a course for VCAR is a really interconnected subject. And a lot of the topics that students will do link in nicely with other concepts they're gonna experience later. 
um, or concepts they've experienced earlier through seven to 10, or if they're in three, four in the year 11 course. So we've actually included throughout the chapter chapters, uh, lots of these little yellow orange link icons. So this proves or indicates to students where topics link to other concepts that they're gonna cover in the textbook or in the course. And that can be linking both forward and backwards. Um, and to paint a bigger picture, a bigger holistic understanding for the students, we've included a concept map at the start of every chapter as well. So that shows firstly how each section of that chapter links to a bigger, broader picture for that topic, but also how those individual topics linked to the whole course and the whole structure of the way uh, the unit one and two or unit three and four is set up. And the amazing thing is for students and for you as teachers, that in the digital resource, all of those linked icons uh, are hyperlinks. So you and students can click directly on that link to chapter 3A, and it will take you immediately to that section of the textbook. So students are reading something, getting a sense of the understanding, they wanna see where it progresses to, they've got access to go straight there. Uh, and we think that's something that's really exciting for students to keep bouncing back and forward between concepts. One of the other things that was um, very important to us was to, um, like Simon said earlier, was to, to minimise the, the fluff content. Um, and so we made sure that when we were thinking about the design of each section in the chapters, um, we were going to follow through with the, the sort of 5E, I suppose, lesson plan idea, which always begins with engage and then works through with explain where you've got your elaborate and all that kind of exploring side of things. And obviously answering the questions and doing your evaluation. So at the start of every section, you'll find these um, really cool little boxes um, called engage and essentially they're not assessed content. Um, and that's made very clear to the students that anything in the engage box is not assessed content, but it's there for you, it's there for the students to, to get excited about what's to come. So there might be some current research or there might be some quirky idea that um, every student loves to read about, but they're just short and sweet. So it's, it's a little, um, tickled to, to get them going and um, it's a really nice way to start the topic to get them thinking. Then as you move on, then we get into the explain section. Um, you can see that on the right. Um, so explain obviously is where you do the exploring, the elaborating, and this is all the accessible content. So where it's possible to have something as a diagram or a picture or a process or a flowchart or whatever, that's always included because we all know our students are so varied. Um, they range from visual learners to students that just like to, you know, they love the chalk and talk. There's the students that just want to sit and watch videos all day. Um, so when trying to maximize the number of times and the different ways that students see information. So obviously having a visual reminder of what's said in the text is super important. Uh, you'll notice also the glossary terms are on the page. Um, which is also handy because if a student comes across a definition, they don't have to worry about flicking to the back of the book. It's there straight away and they can link that content um, in with the definition. So it's nice and clear. Now, as I said, the explain section is all the assessed content. If we include an example, for example, that's not um, mentioned in the study design, that's not accessible, um, then what we do is we have a note there to let the students know that even though we've included this um, scenario, it might be, you know, kidney dialysis or something as an example of, you know, your osmosis and diffusion and so on, um, we will make a note there saying, you know, this is not an accessible example, but we've included it here to illustrate these points and so on. So you'll find little notes throughout the book as well that will highlight um, some of those important points. And obviously we all love a good case study because um, if we can link the students um, 
what they're learning about, so their, their short-term memory, in with something that's long-term, we've got a greater chance that they're going to remember what's currently in the short-term. So the examples that you will see in the book, uh, the case studies that are there, they are relevant to the students and should be able to link in with something that they already know about. They're not um, a random bit of information, which albeit is very exciting, but about some possum that they've never heard of and will never see. So they have no way of linking that information in with what they've got to learn. So the, the case studies that we've included are things that are gonna be relevant and related to their world and will help build on their knowledge. And again, we've made it clear that these are not accessible content. We essentially want the students to be able to say to you, do we have to know this? And you'll be able to say, if it's in the book and it's not in one of those boxes, go for it, you've got to know it. So we want to make that super clear and um, hopefully that is. <laughs> and if we have a look now, this you'll find um, as you go through the book, there will be sections where if there's a process that a student needs to work through, for example, um, in this situation, how to do a Punnett square. We do make sure that there are worked examples, also supported by a video, um, for things like that. It's not only for the teacher, um, sorry, for the student, it's also for the teacher. So it might have been um, you've got a teacher that's returning to biology, maybe you've got a new staff member to biology, or you just need a refresher yourself. It's nice to be able to step through with the students how to do these things. And as we said before, I mean, having a video to go through it as well makes it so much easier. So essentially the students can access that same information three different times. And the cool thing is with um, having these sort of um, I suppose uh, worked examples means that if you're in remote teaching land, um, things will be just that little bit easier because you'll have the instructions there for the student as well. Um, so you'll be able to talk through, they'll be able to see it and you'll have the videos to support you. Obviously things like flipped classrooms, this sort of thing is, is gonna be so um, supportive of their learning as well. And we'll pop on to the next slide. And this is, I think, one of our favourite things. And um, some of you may be VCAA assessors as well and have years and years of experience of marking exams and teaching biology and all the rest of it. Um, but basically, it, it's so hard to, to harness all your knowledge and get it out on the paper. So what we've tried to do is to every section of every chapter, we have what we call a skills box. And that skills box is gonna take the students through um, particular skills for that section of the book. And there may be uh, three or four sections in every chapter. So that means three or four skill boxes for every chapter, which is brilliant. So the students might, for example, learn about command terms. They might learn an acronym it would be a really good way to remember this particular process. Or it might point out, or oh, this is a common style of exam question when you're answering the question, blah, blah, blah. Don't forget it. If they're asking about a graph or a table, you need to refer to data in your answer. Don't forget the units, all those sort of things. So it's all those little tips and tricks that you learn from years and years of teaching and also doing the exam um, marking. So the other cool thing is like you can see that those purple boxes, wherever they pop up means there's something in the digital world. Um, so the skills boxes are also um, have little associated videos. So again, the handy thing about um, the skills boxes, handy for you to remind you of key things to cover with the students. The students can read it in their own time. They can prepare for assessments much easier, having all these little tips and tricks. If you're in remote learning land, remote teaching, that's obviously going to be super handy, reminding themselves before exams by reading through all this stuff. Um, we're just putting in all the things into the book that we really want our students to have um, to maximise how they go and how they understand um, biology. So we, yeah, we love this skills boxes stuff.
Hi, Tori. Sorry, I'm just going to jump in slightly here because we've had a question come up that I think is worth discussing cool. this section. So this question came in from Kristen. So thank you for the question. Um, asked about the success criteria checklist um, or other places in the resource. And I think the skills section is probably a good place for this. Um, whether we've placed a focus on different cognitive verbs and whether there's hints, tips for students on what each cognitive verb means. So obviously going through our success criteria, we may have terms like recall or state or explain, um, and that's probably covered in a bit more depth in those skill sections. But do you or Simon want to expand on the answer to that? Yeah, look, there's absolutely... Um, so the skill sections start in the year 11 resource all the way through to year 12. So you're building on the skills all the way through. And in the year 11 textbook, we've definitely made sure that there are different sections on understanding, okay, how would you answer a compare and contrast question? What does compare mean? What does contrast mean? We've got um, skills boxes that are addressing, okay, what's the difference between explain and describe? So absolutely addressing those command terms, what they mean, how they appear in a question and how to address them in an answer. And Simon, you might wanna add some <laughs> Sorry. No, I think you've, you've nailed that, Tori. And, and we've basically set that up as students in the context of an actual question. So we step them through dot point by dot point how you would answer that compare or that explain question and, and what to include in that scenario. So it's relevant to that context for that topic where we think they'll get asked those types of questions. Cool. Excellent. Thanks, Brett. Thank you. I'll hand over to you, Simon. Perfect, thanks, Tori. Um, so some other stuff we've included in the print book is we've placed um, a big emphasis on the bioethical understanding. Um, a lot of new stuff has been added into the study design that uh, relates to students thinking about the biological, the social, the economic, ethical considerations for a certain technique um, or for some sort of prenatal testing analysis task, use of stem cells, CRISPR as a new technology. So we've made a really explicit focus to this, um, particularly in our unit two section. Uh, and we've used um, really key examples to step students through uh, actually a thinking organizer and doing a bit of a SWOT analysis. So when they're compiling information from their research um, on different articles, so they can work out what is the strength of the topic they're looking at, what's weaknesses, what's opportunities, what's the threats. So how to actually build uh, a better explanation in a research task, but also stepping them through the consideration of what's their stakeholder. Uh, because common questions in exams will ask them to think about the consequences of the implications on uh, a child or on a parent or on a pharmaceutical company. And the way that they answer those questions is going to be very different um, based on that stakeholder. So we've put explicit focus into this as part of that chapter. Uh, and this is really the opportunity we think of where you can develop those skills in students ready uh, for that three and four exam um, at the end of their year 12 course. Uh, another sort of key focus uh, obviously, the study design it has been in the current one is on students structuring uh, a logbook and competing, completing their own practical investigation. Um, and we know that students usually like to have perfect work. They don't like to make mistakes. But we've tried to show them that actually a logbook is a progression of their ideas. It comes through trial and error, through conversations with their peers, through research, through chatting with their teacher. Um, for observing what's happening. Um, and that's how we tried to structure this chapter of the book. So for each of the key areas in an experimental design, uh, we step them through in a logbook what their initial ideas or thoughts might be for that versus obviously what the progression of ideas will look like when it gets to the end of a response. And that's everything from writing an independent variable to writing a dependent variable to um, how precise they should be with their controlled variables, et cetera. But we've also included important features about how they should set up a table, uh, where they should put their units, how they should, what sort of graphs they should use for different types of data they're collecting. Um, so we've tried to encompass all the things that we think students usually have difficulty with 
or that they continually need to work on in their own practice investigations. And we've also shown an example of the new poster format that's required as part of the area study three SAC in unit four. So how the students should lay that out. And in the digital resource, there's actually examples um, of that that you and students can look at to see how we think it should be structured based on some different topics. So we think this is a really good feature for the students uh, in helping them to guide them through their own practical investigation. What we're gonna move on to now is some more um, advantages for the students and their learning and also some advantages for you as a teacher. So we're gonna talk a bit more about our digital resource. But first of all, I'll just show you this video which has a nice uh, three or four minute overview of some of the really cool features. And if you're using our seven to 10 Cambridge Science Series, you'll probably be familiar with some of these. I'm just gonna take you on a really quick tour of the digital resources for students and teachers. The first thing teachers and students will see is the dashboard, which will be familiar to students using our maths resources. You can access the interactive content over here. I'm going to show you the concept map at the start of the chapter first. As you'll see, the map demonstrates the links in the topics and allows students to jump to a section with these hyperlinks. The content is laid out in a single column with downloadable files in the margin, rollover glossary definitions throughout, and in the online teaching suite, there are a range of teacher tips. Another great feature is these link icons. You'll see them in the print book as well, and they indicate where there is linked content in other sections. The icons in the interactive textbook are also hyperlinks that jump you straight to that linked content. The next thing I wanted to show you is the range of videos made specifically for this series. Some of them demonstrate concepts, and others talk students through a key skill. The formative check-in questions can all be answered online using the workspaces and teachers can choose to give the students access to suggested responses so they can then use these self-assessment tools. You can use the question tab in each section to get to another set of short answer questions. Another great feature are the 60 PowerPoint files per book. Some are for definitions and descriptions and others describe a process. Both students and teachers can access these, but the teacher has access to an editable file. At the end of each chapter, students will find a checklist with success criteria. There are linked review questions that are automatically ticked when students answer correctly. Students and teachers can also download these checklists. We've got an exciting new feature for teachers using the VCE Biology Online Teaching Suite. You'll be able to create custom exams for your students accessing actual VCAR exam questions, VCAR style questions, and questions adapted from previous VCAR questions. Using our exam generator, you can set a test or exam. Multiple choice questions can be completed online for auto marking, or you can create a custom PDF version for your students to sit in exam conditions or users revision. You can view and select the questions you want to include in your exam and a range of filters can be applied to generate the topics you want covered. Add the questions to your exam and keep searching for more from the large bank available. Once you're happy with your selection, you can save and preview the format, then print it or share with other teachers in your school. This is just a sneak preview of this new feature. Your rep will be able to give you more details in the coming weeks. Teachers have access to plenty of additional resources that can be downloaded and edited. You'll find chapter tests, practice exams, worksheets and answers, pracs with teacher notes, curated web links and curriculum grids. There are also pracs that are unseen by students that are suitable for SAC work. Talk to your rep to find out more about these. The task manager is an easy way for teachers to set work and monitor progress. Students can be sent on a pathway appropriate to their results in an automatic task. A range of reports are available on the whole class or individual students. Your rep can run you through the options. 
There are a range of help articles and how-to videos that will support you and your students to get the most out of the interactive resources. Just go to the question mark icon on the dashboard and then type your query in the search bar. Okay, so you can you can see that there's so much available um, in the digital resource that's going to support not just your students, but also you as a teacher and delivering uh, whatever it is you need for your classes. Um, just want to highlight a couple of the features that are shown in the video. So um, every question that's there and you saw there was checking questions, end of chapter questions, there's end of unit questions. There's more questions available in the digital resource in the test bank and sample tests. Um, these all have work solutions and those work solutions include where those specific marks are allocated for students. So it's clear to them that these are the key terms, this is the key phrase to use in their answers. Throughout the textbook, there is no BCAR past exam questions. So students aren't going to see the same question three or four times throughout the year uh, as they're doing past exams, homework sheets that you might have developed over the years. So there's no double up of questions that students are seeing, which um, is a real advantage for the students. And this also means, uh, and this is a really important point to take away, that this resource can be used obviously independently, or you can combine this with any other resource that your school is currently using or locked into. Uh, and so it can support both, it's a resource on its own or in conjunction with those. And you'll hear more from our sales director uh, later about this. Um, the other important features to highlight there, as it said in the video, there's over 60 PowerPoint files that students can access, but also as teachers, you can edit, you can add certain slides or components to your own current PowerPoints that you've developed over the years. So we're not saying, you know, take these and use these, change everything you're doing. You know, we already know what you're doing in the classroom is amazing. This is only there to help support you as a teacher. There's over 90 videos in each book covering, as it said, key concepts, key processes, um, key skills that are outlined at the end of each section for students. So as Tori mentioned before, it really caters for all of your types of learners. If they're not just that sort of chalk and talk and they're more visual learners, they can see this process explained to them throughout a video process. And again, that just further supports those students with low literacy, English as a second language, et cetera, as well. Okay. And as you saw, probably one of the big advantages uh, in, in the world we're living at the moment is if we get thrown into another snap seven day lockdown, you know, believe we don't want that again. But the teacher task manager is a really great way to be able to set work for your students remotely. So you can flip the classroom, um, you can sort of do a bit of direct instruction and then set your students to do this or you're walking around the room working with them or working with them online. Um, but it basically steps students through an activity of sequences uh, to go through. So if they can set it so they need to get a certain percentage on this little quiz. If they get that, they can keep going with some further content or you can send them back to a video to watch, refine their knowledge, and then keep going through another worksheet on that topic. Uh, and this is all programmable by you, really easy to use, really great for your students um, and supporting them as individuals. Um, I think I'll hand over to Tori. Thank you. Um, look, another thing that we all love um, in the classroom is being able to get um, formative feedback from our students, because it's so important for us to know where they're at with their learning, um, obviously, because that's our, our role, but also we need to know how to direct them forward. Um, and we need to help the students identify where they're at as well so that they can take the next steps um, in their journey. So obviously one of the awesome things about this um, book is the fact that um, in the digital world, um, you can actually do some pre-testing of the year nine and 10 content that's relevant to the year 11 and 12 program. So if you've got, um, for example, um, a student coming in from another school, uh, maybe you've got kids coming from different um, classes with different teachers and you just wanna check what's their prior knowledge, 
then this way you can actually do a bit of revision on the information that they should know from year nine and 10, do a bit of pre-testing, work out where they're at. And that way, you know, okay, I can whiz through that bit, but I need to spend a bit longer on that. So we know that feedback is so important, both formative and summative. And so we wanted to make all those little things that are helpful for teachers accessible um, to make it really super easy for you to do that. And you'll see as we go into the next slide, um, a lovely thing that we've got in the um, start of the year 12 resource, so units three and four resource, is the first chapter actually covers the background um, from year 11 that's really important for year 12. So that first chapter will go through, okay, what's a cell? What's important in terms of the structure of the cell and the function of the organelles? How do things move in and out of a cell? Um, and the key points that are important from year 11 that are necessary in year 12. And that is just gonna be a massive benefit for the students because we all know over the holidays, their brains seem to empty out to some degree. And so having a bit of a recap at the start of the year is gonna be brilliant. Um, also keep in mind things like um, if you've got a transition program at the end of year 11, if you've got um, Head Start program, summer holiday homework that you wanna set, that you know, having this chapter there to recap through the key content from year 11 is wonderful. And we all know you get students that are moving from uh, you might be in an IB school and so you might have students moving from first year IB into year 12 VCE. You might have students that haven't done units one and two. So it's that chapter is just a, such an asset for, for any student wherever they've come from. So yep, we love that. Now, as Simon has already mentioned and you've seen a bit in the, the digital um, little video, there are so many questions you won't need, like you won't know what to do with yourself. The students will be so excited, or probably not, but they they will eventually get excited because it'll help them prepare for their exams. Um, so throughout each section, um, we've got check-in questions, and they're those sort of lower level blooms questions, you know, to get them to revisit the material, check that they understand it, get those key terms under their belt and so on. And then as they move through the textbook, they'll get to the end of a section and there they'll have end of section questions, um, surprise. And those questions will be starting to head towards what you'd more expect um, in terms of your analysis and evaluation type of VCAA style questions. So they'll be leading up to that. And certainly there'll be, you know, some of the, the usual um, questions that you might see, you know, the definitions and the recalls and so on, and then building up to the, the more um, yeah, analysis style of question. And you also have um, the end of chapter questions. So we've got sections within the chapter and then, then you've got the end of chapter questions. And the end of chapter questions are all VCAA style questions. Um, as Simon mentioned, none of the questions are old VCAA questions. Um, we wanted to allow you to save those VCAA questions for when the students are doing practice exams or, or you know, um, whatever it happens to be that you'd like them to do to develop their skills maybe closer to the exam period. So all of these questions are VCAA style questions and they're all new. And the lovely thing about the end of chapter questions is because we really feel that biology is interconnected and the VCAA loves a good question that draws on multiple areas, as the students progress through the chapters, the chap end of chapter questions will actually link in to, to previous chapters. So not in a massive, oh my gosh, we've got 600 questions by the end of the book kind of way, but there'll be little snippets. If you're, for example, you've got a question on respiration, we'll link that back into enzymes or we'll link that back into um, understanding you know, the organelles and so on and the, their role in different processes. And so we're just keeping that interconnectedness alive as we work through the, um, the textbook. And as you saw in the video, all of these sort of questions are in the digital land. Um, the students can self-assess, it's, it's all there and, and it's so easy to use and perfect. You can choose how you want to use it. 
um, but you know it's set up so it can be formative give you an idea of where they're at and then you can move on from there and of course there's more um, at the end of the units there's also questions um, and that's not to mention in the digital land in the teacher um, suite you will find practice exams you'll find uh, two tests for every chapter you're going to find you know more test bank questions the exam generator um, it's a yeah, gift that keeps on giving as you get to these unit um, sort of exam style um, questions again they're going to be linking to all the concepts within that unit so very much obviously in the style of the vcaa because that's um, we want to make sure that we're supporting the students in developing the skills and that interconnectedness that is is biology and tori i'll just add there um obviously are these questions in the chapter reviews the unit reviews We've structured that on the Bloom's sort of level of taxonomy, which is what the exam does as well. So we've tried to break it down in terms of the 25% the sort of basic recall, 50% explain, 25% really higher order analysis application type questions. So students are getting the same format that they will see on their exam later. And again, no VCAA questions. Um, so Again, you can save those up um, to closer to exam time. The kids will have a lot of practice, a lot of stuff to, to rely on, and you'll have access to all of the answers. So you can disseminate those answers when appropriate, that kind of thing. And as Simon said, the answers are mark by mark. So you know exactly what each student has to deliver to get that mark. And we do have all these resources for you as Simon mentioned every one of them can be edited um, so we've got the chapter test there's curriculum grids there's um, our favorite web links that you can use with cool little videos and so on um, we've got other videos we've got worksheets and answers we've got more worksheets and answers we've got pracs with teacher notes and practice exams it's it's all there for you and all of it has answers, all of it's got teacher notes where appropriate, and all of it can be edited. So you might find, for example, um, there's two tests there for chapter two. You might do the test with your kids on one day and you've got five students away on a geography excursion and ah, you didn't find out till the last minute. So you've got those kids the next day, whoop out chapter, like the second chapter test and off you go. Um, and you're going to find you've just saved yourself a whole lot of hassle. So there's that option. You can combine tests and make a bigger test. Um, the questions aren't repeated between the tests. You could turn it into a, a little task you do in the classroom to find out how the students are going. It's totally up to you. You know your kids, you know your cohort, uh, you know what teaching style suits you. Um, and so you have all these resources at your fingertips and you can just chop and change as you see fit. You might even want to take some stuff from a worksheet and put it in with the sample sack that we give you. You might want to combine some of the tests into something else. It's totally up to you how you use all of these resources. And the pracs are just the same. So we'll give you a whole range of pracs and the pracs are in way beyond the number of hours that you'll actually need to um, do pracs for in the, the new study design. So you can pick and choose what you'd like, you can amend them as you see fit, all editable and all have answers. We also pop in teacher notes there. So, you know, for example, there's a, a really cool um, antigenic drift um, task you can do in year 12 and there's a little teacher note in there you know try to stress the kids out and put a bit of pressure on and that just makes things get a bit more exciting and then the point um when you have a look at the prac you'll see but the, the point really gets illustrated much better if the kids are rushing so there's little things like that little tips in there 
um, to help you run the pracs and, you know, or watch out for, you know, when you put this stopper on that you blah, 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 blah. So that's super handy for people returning or haven't done this prac before or they're new to teaching biology or, yeah, it might just be a prac that you've heard of and never actually tried. So the tips are all there for you. And where possible, we've included um, the results that we'd expect from the experiment as well, um, which is obviously super handy just to give you a guide. And as I said, all the answers are there as well for discussion questions. Um, there's prompter questions, pre-lab questions. Um, you pick and choose. And I'm rambling, so sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> Your turn, Simon. <laughs> Perfect, thanks, Tori. Just the, uh, the, the last little bit from from us uh, before we hand back over to Emma um, to do the sales sort of wrap at the end. Um, so obviously the emphasis on the new content has been our big focus um, with this resource. So we've made sure, as we've said uh, throughout the presentation that we increase the focus on the practical skills, the bioethical understanding, which we've showed you examples of that uh, we're using in the textbook. Um, we've obviously got a key focus on the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander perspectives from knowledge, culture, and history. And that's a big part of, uh, we feel, Unit 2 and Unit 4. Um, obviously, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, and its use in editing genomes, um, improving photosynthetic efficiencies and crop yields. So again, with the way our book is structured, the CRISPR knowledge comes in uh, with the DNA techniques you're familiar with, um, with photosynthesis, uh, and there's links back and forth between the two topics. Uh, and that's a really good emphasis on how that new edition uh, is linking to current content. Obviously, for those of you that have been teaching um, the subject for a while, C3, C4, CAM plants back in again. So uh, we again focus uh, on those different types of plants uh, and how the processes are different for each of those. New things like biofuel production, sympatric speciation, um, great examples in comparing, especially the difference with that to allopatric uh, and what students will need to do. Um, and when you get access to this presentation at the end, you will see there in the bottom right, uh, there's a big blue box with an arrow that says you can click to view our summary of the study design changes. So we know it can be overwhelming. So we've put together a nice short document linking uh, what's moved where, how it's moved uh, and the reasons why. And that's all come from our sort of work with the review panel, our understanding of the course and the new additions. So something that hopefully help you out as teachers. As well, we're going to be continually uh, updating uh, our case studies as new scientific discoveries and evidence comes to light over the next four, five, six years, uh, however long this course is in place for. We'll always add to the teacher notes that you have access to online uh, we'll include new links to articles and research that helps you address specific dot points with your students. Um, this will be updated yearly as things are coming out. So there'll be then new examples of how you can use that article for a case study for a SAC, or if it's a great article with some more evidence and data on COVID vaccines and things, it might be some things you can use as a SAC prompt or a practice SAC prompt with your uh, unit four topic on disease, which is where it's moved to for next year. And this is all a great way to just keep your students being inspired as well and getting them to re read up uh, and look at media and new, new work that's coming out. Um, obviously the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander knowledge is a key addition. So um, as part of the writing of this textbook, we've actually consulted with um, the ANTSI elders as well as educators uh, and really used their understanding from their own knowledge of the land versus their ancestors' knowledge of the land and actually um, how they've survived um, on the land and through the evolution of the ancestors, those Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders here, when they moved here, et cetera. So we've really sort of drawn on their knowledge and expertise to help formulate and sort of put that chapter together. And we think that's gonna be a really nice read in building your students' understanding uh, of this content. As I said before, we've done a whole chapter uh, in both books on scientific skills, logbook, students' understanding of the difference between accuracy, precision, continuous, discrete data, all of this stuff, because this is actually a large percentage of the study design. So 20% um, 
of the student's exam is on this area of study. Uh, and a lot of people, a lot of students think that it's really easy marks, uh, but there's a lot of intricacies and a lot of detail they need to know. So especially with those topics, the skills, the tips, the tricks we've provided uh, will really support students in understanding the key differences between some of those terms and how to apply that in a practical setting. So what's been great is there's been lots and lots of questions come through the Q&A today. And thank you, Brett, um, Kylie and Ben, who have been busily answering, answering those. If you leave today's presentation um, after Emma speaks at the end and you've got more questions that you think of or you want to communicate directly with the authors, um, there's my contact details. So please uh, take note of that. Email us anytime. We'll pass that on to authors of specific topics if you've got questions about a chapter and how we're addressing a content, um, questions about what, or what skills are covered, how it can support you, how it can support your students. We're happily there to answer anything you might have at any time. So um, please don't hesitate to contact us further. So I'm going to hand over to uh, Emma now, and Emma's just going to talk through um, some of the publication dates and some things when textbooks are available for you. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Tori. Thanks, team. OK, I've only got a couple of slides to show you through. So first of all, and most importantly, are the publication dates. So units one and two, um, I'm pleased to say that um, the textbooks are now available. So um, review copies, inspection copies can be sent out to you on request. Um, unit three, four is due August the 13th. Um, at the moment, we have complete page proof copies, print copies that we can get out to you if you'd like to look at it um, in that form or else both textbooks are also available to view online on our website. Okay, so here we've got your purchasing and pricing. Uh, so your purchasing options are print and digital. Uh, the print textbook includes the interactive textbook as well as the PDF so you can access um, that offline. There's also the option to purchase digital only. And then of course, um, the online teaching suite. So with regards to the online teaching suite, um, if your school decides to book list our textbooks, um, we'll provide all your biology teachers with um, access to their own online teaching suite, as well as we'll um, provide you with um, hard copies of the print textbook for every teacher for biology. Now, there was a question, um, now I'm just gonna see if I can find that about um, how you can monitor student progress um, of your students, sorry, how you can monitor the progress of your students online. So one of the features um, in the online teaching suite is um, a report feature. So this is where you can track your students' progress. So everything that they've answered and completed can be found in um, the reports. And also um, we have a test feature and you can um, also view your students' results in that feature as well. So I hope that's answered um, that question there. Um, and here we go. This is um, another important slide. So this is the information that you need to contact your rep. I encourage you to contact them if you would like to have a more thorough run through of the textbook and the online resources. Um, one thing I should note also is that um, coming up next term, we should have trials available of the complete um, online resource for teachers. So um, should you wish to trial that, um, please do contact your rep and we'll get that all organised for you as well. Um, Emma, just a couple of questions that have come through. Oh, yeah. um, so there's a couple of questions from Claire and Michelle. Thank you, Claire and Michelle. Um, they're small schools with very small class numbers. Yep. Will they still get access to the teacher resources? Because in the past, they've sometimes had to have at least 10 students to access those. Oh, most definitely. No, there's we don't have a limit on numbers. So, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, if the school's book listed, then a teacher, you know, VCE biology teacher will get access complimentary. Yep. Um, and the, thanks, Emma. And the other question there is, the online teaching suite, is that for a one year subscription only or indefinitely if they, if they have the book? So what we do is if you continue to book list our book, your account will be rolled over. So as, if you do stop, then the access will be cut off at the end of the year, of course. But if it's um, continued to be book listed, 
then your accounts will be rolled over. Now, uh, we have had another question about other science subjects. Um, and Simon, you had some comments about that last week. Yeah, so uh, obviously all the other science subjects, so physics, psychology, chemistry, all have new study designs starting 2023. So they're a year behind um, biology. So all of those texts are currently underway. So they're already in the process of being written. Um, and now with the consultation drafts out for all those new study designs, they're really ramping up, ready uh, for hopefully you to access some samples of a similar time next year. Um, so obviously one year behind biology. Um, uh, Leah has raised another question about secondhand textbooks. Yep. Um, so Claire, if your students do purchase the secondhand textbook, which obviously wouldn't be next year, but um, in subsequent years, they can purchase a reactivation code. Um, it's usually, I think it's 1995 or around that cost um, for access to the online content. So they do need a secondhand book to um, uh, then to purchase that reactivation code to get that access. And there was a question earlier about, um, um, sorry, we have to find that. But Cassandra's also asked, um, is the online teaching suite available to purchase without book listing? Yep, it, it actually is. But, you know, it comes at a cost, of course. But yes. Absolutely. And, um, oh, I think there was one that came in and <laughs> went already. Yeah, they, um, that, Paula, that question was just um, if they book list for 11 and 12, do they get complimentary access to the online? And, and absolutely, you definitely do. So. Yep. Yeah, and in fact, the way we set up schools is um, we for every teacher we add the um, teaching resources for all the books that you book list. So even if you're only teaching year eleven, you will still get access to year twelve, and that's actually really useful for prep you know, preparing the students, um, you know, for going ahead. That's yeah. right. And there was one other question from a teacher um, about will um, this resource be sitting on Cambridge Go? And yes, it will be. So if the, your students are using maths. Um, or book listing our VCE history titles or whatever title that may be, it will all be sitting on their bookshelf. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Paula. No problem. Um, any other questions before we finish this up? No? I think that's it. Okay. Well, we might... Um, we might leave it there then. Um, thanks again, everyone, for attending um, our webinar. Um, we hope, and I think I'm sure you um, would have found it really worthwhile. It was a really thorough um, and interesting webinar. So thanks again for joining.